my second appointment with the MFM is the same day. That works okay, perfect. So January 4th, you're seeing the MFM. Uh, are you doing the fetal echo the same day? Yes, in the morning, yes. Let's get these babies, ladies. What's up, Fertility Fam? It's editing day, and I'm trying to piece together these videos so they make sense. This video is me talking to the nurse at Accolade. For context, Accolade is the liaison for the employees between the employee, the insurance, and the employer. We are not, under our coverage plan, um, permitted to talk directly to the insurance. Long story, but that's just how it's set up. It saves the company money. And so I enrolled in this program, I can't remember, but basically let's call it a maternity program, in order to get a discount on delivery. So I check in with a nurse once a month. And so this is that once a month meeting that I have that you're about to hear. Enjoy. All right. So a um, couple of things before we get started. Have you heard that Comcast is no longer going to have Accolade after the end of the year? Only from you in our last call. Okay. All right. I'm super bummed about it because I have a lot of Comcast people that I'm having to say goodbye to. So I do have um, information that I can send you on who the new people are. So I'll put that at the end of our messages today. Okay. I don't want to call them until January 1st. Um, we're going to be yours until December 31st. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. But if anybody calls you, I'm just trying to pull it up because I keep forgetting the name of the place. If anybody calls you from there saying, you know, they were calling to enroll you in the program, that would be their program. Um, now you already did what you needed to do by enrolling in our problem, our, our program to get your incentive. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, I don't know if anything's going to change. So like if they call you and want to enroll you and like you don't want to, then just make sure that you don't have to get your incentive. Um, but it, hopefully it's going to be very similar to this where they just offer you, you know, some extra support. And I, I really don't know what else they do. I don't know anything about it. They're called included health. Included health? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll send you their information and their phone number. Just don't call them until January 1st. Okay. Probably the second. They might be on holiday on the first. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. Actually, the second, is the second the legal holiday? Is that Monday? Yeah, I think it's the third then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see here. We've got your due date June 3rd. We still stick them in that date? Yep. All right, good. What have you had going on in the last uh, few weeks since we talked? Uh, I met with the MFM. We did all of my onboarding. I also had my nuchal translucency. That came back fine. I'm going in for a, oh my God, the anatomy scan. I've got it scheduled for January 4th along with a fetal echo. Okay. And then my second appointment with the MFM is the same day. Oh, okay, perfect. So January 4th, you're seeing the MFM. Uh, are you doing the fetal echo the same day? Yes, in the morning, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. All right, lots of stuff going on all at the same time. All right, let's see here. So 6-3, I just want to pull up exact, do it on the calculator because I don't trust my brain sometimes. <laughs> okay. Three, and today is the 16th. So you're 16 weeks exactly, right? Tomorrow I will be 16 weeks exactly. Why? Does it change this? I swear it changes the state on me. It does because you're June. Okay. No, the third. Hold on. June third. Today's the sixteenth. Oh, it's calling you sixteen weeks today based on that. Yeah, no, I had my I had my transfer, a five day transfer on a Thursday. Oh, okay. So the seventh day is always a Saturday, which is the so I'm sixteen weeks on Saturday. Okay. All right. Well it's not even like it's a big deal for us for our purposes. Okay. Anyway. It's just for putting it in there. So I'll go with yours. Yeah, I think um, your calculator is probably going off of like last menstrual period versus an IVF transfer. Like we know exactly literally using your due date is all I'm using, so... Right, but I, what I'm saying is what they're basing that calculation uh, so on is it. LMP yeah. and not IVF You're right. transfer. You're right. Yeah, that's a valid point. Sometimes it just changes the date on me because it likes to do that, but... <laughs> yeah. So you had some ultrasounds done. How are you feeling? I feel fine. Good. Yeah. Are you uh, feeling any flutters or anything yet, or not quite? Not quite. I felt like I did, and then I tried to have some ice cream to see if I could repeat it, and it didn't. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, not yet. Not quite. Yeah, definitely, even if you start feeling it, it's not going to be anything that you can count on or probably, you know, get to duplicate again or anything like that. So, don't ah, okay. over that. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, you really wouldn't even be monitoring that until, you know, closer to the third trimester. But, like, when you start to feel, like, real movement, um, you can kind of go by what's normal for you. And then if it's less than that, let the doctor know right away. Okay, gotcha. All right. How are you doing with your yoga videos? Good. Pretty good. I mean, I could, I would like to increase it, but I've been able to maintain it. Yeah. Yeah, good. And then I also, right, I need to do treadmill stuff because the doctor wants me to try to walk 20 minutes a day, which I haven't. Well, I walk to the subway. I live in New York, but I can't say it's consistently 20 minutes. Okay. You work from home? Only on Monday and Friday. So, yeah, you're probably getting some good steps in there if you have to leave to go places then. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Did they do, oh, you did all the genetic testing earlier with the uh, transfer and everything? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Did you do any of the NIPT or any of that? No, I opted out. All right. Let me just see your medications. What concerns do you have or questions at this point? Anything? No, no. Everything's going great. Okay. I did have a nosebleed, but I did Google that and that seems normal. I didn't have it in my last pregnancy, but yeah, it was, it's, Also, like, I've been running my air mist now because it's dry because of uh-huh. the heat running, so. Yep, and that's what I was going to say. A couple of things going on there. You're pregnant, your blood fluid, your blood and your fluid volumes are increased, so that is not uncommon in pregnancy. And then plus with the dry air, that can definitely um, add to that. You know, if it starts to become, become something that's an issue or happening frequently, definitely let the doctor know about it. Okay. You're still doing your prenatal vitamin one tablet once a day? Yes. All right, I'm just going to check through all these medications, and then let's see what else we have here. The omega-3? Yes. About four grams once a week. I am down to three grams daily. Okay. And the next one is the choline? Yes, still taking that. One tablet once a day? Yep. Perfect. And then the next one's the baby aspirin, one of those once a day? Yes. And how's your blood pressure been? Fine. It's been on the low Good. side, yeah, but it's fine. Perfect. Okay. And just as long as you're not getting any symptoms with that low blood pressure, dizziness, feeling like you're going to fall down, pass out, um, start to like pay attention as you're getting out of bed, sit on the edge of the bed first, just to make sure that you're not dizzy first. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had any. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And then next on the list is vitamin D, the lozenge one month a day. Yep. For sometimes it unchecks things that I had previously checked. <laughs> um, methylfolate, I have one tablet every other day. Yes. Uh, your injections, the anoxoferin, I'm Yes, I'm actually, tomorrow is my last day with those. <laughs> yes. Okay. We can take that one out then. So if you only have one left, we'll pull that one. And then the essential amount is 50 milligrams. Yes, that's going to be increased to 100 milligrams. Okay. So one, is it one pill of 100 milligrams? Two pills of 50 milligrams, okay. yeah. All right, perfect. So I'll just not need that. Uh, hydroxychloroquine, sulfate tab. Yeah. Oh, I just say work out putting these meds in here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then I think I got everything. Is there anything else we need to add? The prednisone. So I've been weaning off of it. I'm on, instead of the 30 dollars I think the last time I talked to you, I'm on 5 milligrams a day. Oh, that's so weird. That one disappeared out of here. So let's get that back in there. And I'm sorry, how many milligrams? I'm at 5 milligrams now. Once a one day. tablet once a day? Mm-hmm. Tablet. Okay. Anything else? Nope, that is it. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right, so feeling pretty good. You've got that anatomy scan all scheduled, the fetal echo. Did they give you any instructions on how to prepare for um, the ultrasound or the echo? The echo is probably not really any prepping. No, they didn't give me any instructions on either. Okay, the only thing I would say with the ultrasound, it is you probably want your bladder to be kind of full. I wouldn't get to the point where you're uncomfortable in case you have to sit wait, but you can always empty it a little bit as opposed to like it takes a long time if you have to sit there and try to fill it up and drink water. So kind of going in there with it already like pretty fill it a little bit makes it easier okay and that way they can get a clear picture and all of that you know echo yeah there's probably not really anything for you to prep for for that other than that the only other thing you'd have coming up sort of just to look a little bit further since you won't be with me anymore your glucose tolerance test usually around 24 to 28 weeks okay uh, do you remember that from before you'd have to drink the really like sugary yes drink? i do remember <laughs> So I'm not a big fan of that. I always brought a cup of ice and a straw to make it go down a little bit easier. Okay. Talk to your doctor about whether they want you to fast prior to that test or if they're okay with you eating. If they are okay with you eating, you want to try to focus on protein. Don't eat anything sugary, even like the night before. Don't eat it like sugary snacks. Try to watch your, like the night before, like rice, bread, and pasta because that can shoot your sugar up. 
same thing next morning. Maybe make that like if you like eggs, maybe make it more of like an eggs and veggies kind of breakfast. Try to avoid the toast, pasta, rice, anything like that. Gotcha. Uh, the test okay. That All right. Yep. Um, so you drink the drink, you wait an hour, they take your blood, and then you're done. If you pass that, you're good to go. If you don't pass it, usually they follow it up with a three hour glucose tolerance test. Gotcha. Okay. And then other than that, uh, the only other test will be later in the pregnancy, the uh, group made a strap. Are you uh, trying to deliver vaginally or is this going to be a, a C-section? Vaginally. Vaginally. Okay. So yeah, we'll do that around 36 feet. We'll swab to make sure that bacteria is not there. If it is, not a big deal. We'll just make sure you get antibiotics while you're in labor. If you don't get the antibiotics, then they're going to just observe the baby and make sure baby's doing okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So other than that, those are like the main tests. You know, when you get a little bit closer to your due date, they'll probably have you start coming more frequently every two weeks, every week. They might have you doing NSTs where they put you on the monitor. It really just depends on okay. you know, where you're at with things. Yeah, she um, told me so. it'll be, um, we'll go to three weeks, then two weeks, then one week as we get every week, like every single week as we okay. get closer. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. And then other than that, you know, like not the fetal movement, if you ever notice a decrease in that, let your doctor know. They might have you do kick counts in your third trimester. Some doctors do, some don't, so just ask the doctor about that. When um, typically would I feel like kicks consistently? Like, when is that? What's the range? Yeah, probably, like, after 20 weeks, 24 weeks. Okay. I would say, do you know where the location of your placenta? Fundal. It's at the fundal. Okay, okay. And it's not, it's not anterior. Did they say that? No, it's right at the top in the middle. Yeah. All right. And you should um, not really have any issue feeling it. And since you've been pregnant before, you already have an idea of what it feels like. So, you know, you might start feeling it a little bit sooner. Um, but, like, really, like, actually feeling it, I'd say definitely after 20 weeks, maybe even closer to 24. It just really depends. It's different for everybody. Plus, it depends on, like, how active your baby decides to be. Okay. Um, how big, how strong. You know what I mean? Yep. Position sometimes plays a role in how much you feel. Okay. I like to get me in my ribs a lot, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, um to benefit stuff. So normally we would tell you around 28 weeks about your breast pump benefits, leave of absence if you needed that information, um, and how to add the baby to the health plan. So those are all things you definitely want to make sure that you ask included health about. Okay. They're going to want to be the ones that go over all that. So around 32 weeks is when you want to start to order that breast pump. So like 28 weeks is normally when I would go over all of that stuff with you. So definitely make sure that you talk to them about it because you want to make sure that you get your breast pump from an in-network vendor so that it's covered. I believe you still have access to the Limerick program. Yeah, I did register for the Limerick program and it requires that you use their breast pump. There's a Limerick branded breast pump. It requires you to use that to be in it or just... No, that's that's our only it. option. We can't like I can go on Amazon and find another breast pump. I have no, to, yeah. No, but there are other vendors that you can get your breast pump through. At least at least this year with us, I don't know how that's changing, but like I would normally send you a list of those vendors, and and then there is a um trying to say that you don't have a preferred one. So like you might have like three other vendors that you can go through, and it would be covered by the insurance. So that's all stuff that you want to ask the new people. Okay, so you might be able to get that that pump from Limerick. But you, that doesn't necessarily count what the insurance is covering unless they're telling you, yes, that is your benefit. Gotcha. Okay. I may have All misunderstood. Right, All right. But I'll clarify. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's everything. I, just, I didn't want to leave, like, without telling you stuff, like, that I would normally be telling you about without being prompted. Now you may have to prompt this company. I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, you still have access to us and to me until December 31st. You've got the 24 hour nurse line. If you should need it over the holidays, I'll send you at the end of like all the information that I send you, I'll send you their contact information, but anything that you want that I've sent you in the past, make sure you like take it off of the portal because I don't know if that's just going to disappear. Okay. Yeah. I've downloaded and printed everything you sent me like the first trimester, second trimester stuff. So I've got that. All right. All right. Perfect. And then, yeah, other than that, I mean, just keep looking out for those signs of preterm labor that we talked about before contractions, cramping, bleeding, fluid leaking, lower back ache. And then with the blood pressure, the headaches, blurry vision, spots in your vision, swelling that comes on suddenly in your face, hands and feet. Okay. Um, 
And then just, you know, as far as um, boots, are you doing good emotionally? It sounds like you're pretty happy about everything. Yeah, everything is pretty good. My anxiety has been a little bit higher, which is why we upped okay. the Zoloft. But other than right. that, everything is good. Okay, all right. And that's uh, probably not unexpected. I'm sure they weren't surprised to hear that. Um, no. That <laughs> yeah, not at all. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I mean, other than that, if you need anything prior to December 31st, I'm here. I'm all right. Is there anything else you want to go over? Any questions? No, I think we've covered it all. Thank you. All right. Well, I appreciate you calling me. I'm glad we were able to connect. I'll send you all of that information. And I wish you the very best. It was a pleasure working with you. And I'm sad I won't get to hear how everything turns out. <laughs> thank you. It was a pleasure working yeah. with you as well. Oh, thank you. Take care. Okay, you Happy too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, can you see me? I'm going to switch phones because this is my work phone. Oh my goodness, I can't tell. I think my glasses are dirty and the camera lens is dirty, but hopefully that you all can see me. Wait, Liberty. Oh my God. She just wants to be on my lap. So that's my Optum. Oh my God, not my Optum. I don't, I don't ever want to talk to that nurse again. That was my accolade nurse, which it sounds like the company is switching, which they've sent us no information about. I've only heard it from her. We're moving to, as you heard, included health. And I guess we'll do every, no liberty, no liberty. Nobody's here. I'm just talking to the fam. Hi, Justice. Hi. Okay. So, liberty, that's enough. I'm going to come back, you guys. Let me see what's going on with this baby. All right. And as you heard in that video, that was my last meeting with Kellyanne. We're getting a new provider. She told me the name. I put it in the computer and I tried to, like, register myself. Then it said it was already registered with my name and email. So then I did, like, a password reset. That didn't work. So I'm going to have to wait for them to reach out to me. I know our benefits are already being processed because like I got my FSA card already, even though it's not activated until the first, the 2023 um, flex spending account. I got that. So I know they're moving. So maybe I'll get something in the mail. Maybe I should open up all my mail. Maybe I've already gotten it. Holla. I'm getting over a head cold. Today's like the first day I got out of bed. I took a bath and I did all that fun stuff. I had not done that all week. Don't judge. I am on staycation until I go back to work. I go back into the office on the 5th of January. So, and the 4th is when we do all of the scans, but I'll talk about that in my bump day video. So if you haven't seen that, it'll come out after this. Make sure you check it out. It'll probably come out on Christmas day. <sighs> Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I always forget to say that. And just, you know, let the commercials play in all the videos. It helps me out a lot. And you know, I'm saving for baby. So I would greatly appreciate that. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Mm. <sighs> baby, that's to us all.